guys, we are in the first gen on the road. We got a 7.3 behind us. He's probably wondering why I'm all over the road. I'm all over the road because I'm filming, dude. That's just, it's the safest thing to be doing while you're driving. It's way safer than like texting or calls or anything else, you know. Anyways, the sun is horrible driving straight into the east this morning, but we're on our way to the Ohio property to get the timber quoted. I don't know if I'm gonna have any pricing today. They're gonna look at the job to see if they even wanna take it on, but they said that it's pretty close to where they're located, so they might consider it even if it's not a huge, huge payday. My property, of course, guys, like it has some trees on it that are like Goliaths, like huge, but it does have a lot like that. Most of the trees are younger and most of them are probably under like 18 inches in diameter. In terms of our mature tree population, most of our mature trees are probably under 18 inches across. I don't know if they're gonna wanna take that job or not, but we're gonna go over there and at least walk the property and see what they say and I'll let you know at the end there. I probably won't do a lot of filming when it's just me and him one on one looking around the ground just because, well, privacy reasons and uh, I didn't in advance communicate with him that I would be filming so I don't want to be disrespecting his privacy and putting him all over the internet and also it is an Amish based saw mill company a logging company so I don't know how well he'll take to the camera or not and so out of respect I'm just going to assume that he doesn't want to be filmed and keep it at that well the meeting with the logger didn't go quite as planned uh, he just kind of told me that you know, which is, it's a logger type thing to say, you know. He looked at all my underbrush and he's like, man, you just wait 10 more years, just 10 more years, and you'll have some trees worth some real money. He's like, right now, I could take a whole bunch of stuff out of here, but he's like, you'd make about half as what you would if you just waited 10 more years, you know, and I'm like, I really don't care about the timber, man. Like, like I get it, you're trying to do what's best for you and what's best for me as the seller because I might be able to make an extra $10,000 and wait another 10 years, you know, like I get it, you know, but I'm like, I really don't care about the timber value. I just care about the quality of hunting and I would much rather have the property logged again now and have it super thick, even if you just log half of what you could take and then in 10 years come and take another half of what you could have taken. But I'm like, I just, I really care more about keeping the property thick and dense and way better bedding than all my neighbors than having a super good timber crop. And he's like, well, get back in touch with me in about 10 years and we'll go from there. And I'm like, I literally just said, I don't really care to wait 10 years. I'm not worried about losing a little bit of money on it. Like I, the property was cheap. I really don't care about the timber. And he was just like, well, I mean, I'm just gonna do you a disservice and cut you out of what you could have had if I take it now. And I'm like, I really don't care about the timber. I really don't need it. I really just want the property to stay thick. So I don't know if he was understanding like that I really honestly did not care about the timber value or the long-term timber value. But the other thing is too, he could just be like, well, if it's not a job that's like a little bit of a gold mine, I don't need to pay a big crew of guys to come out here and get equipment that's running and idling and whatever. Like, I, I don't know if it's worth his time to go out there to do a 20 some acre property that's got like half the timber on it as somebody else that's got a 20 some acre property that's loaded with all mature trees and no underbrush, you know? So he's probably looking at, what do I want to fill my schedule with more than the fact that I was like, I really don't care. Like just take whatever you can take out of here and. We'll go from there. I just want it thick and I want it to stay thick. As a business person, you know, he's got to do what's best for his business. And if booking my property is half of what he could do, booking somebody else's in a week's time of logging, then why would he book mine, you know? So that's just kind of how it goes. So anyways, that's pretty much what he said was there's stuff to take. There's a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that's like 10 years away from hitting its peak potential, which is a freaking bummer, but I don't know. Maybe we'll call another logging company and see if I can convince one to be like, yo, dude, just freaking take some trees, man. But I don't know, we'll see. He's heading down to my other property today though, down a little bit more south of us in Indiana. And he's gonna go check out that property, which isn't which isn't as big, I already told him. I said it's about half the size of this one in Ohio, but it's got probably more mature trees on that small property than this 20 some acres does combined. I'm like, it's, it's smaller, but it's got a lot of timber. I don't know, but I didn't wanna take all the timber off of that property anyway either. So he said he's gonna go check it out and see what it's even worth 
and then I can just let them know what trees I do or don't want them to take because there's a few on there that I don't want them to touch just because they're really cool and they're trees that you'll never see again in my lifetime like starting from a sprout to grow like they're never going to get that big in my lifetime or any of yours I mean they're just it's just not gonna happen again. You're like a 200 to 250 year old tree. That was the founding of the United States, you know? Like that's how far back that goes and that tree was a sprout starting to grow. So it's like, do you wanna cut that tree or is it worth it more just for the sentimental value to let it grow so that my kids and grandkids can see that tree just to, just to see something of that magnitude that's ours, you know what I mean? Like it's on our ground, you know? And I was asking him about hinge cutting and I asked him what his opinion was. I'm like, so what's your opinion on hinge cutting? you know and I'm like because I had a whole row of trees that were dropped and he's like well honestly he's like if you're doing it th he, this was his words he's a deer hunter too you know so he understood I was hinge cutting some hickories and some small oaks and some soft maple and hard maple and just whatever some basswood and he's like he's like honestly he's like if you're more of a deer hunter do what you got to do for your deer management he's like most of these trees you're hinge cutting most of them aren't even going to be worth anything in your lifetime you know what i mean like in your lifetime of when you'd be worried about even the financial gain from logging those trees you know he's like you might be 70 years old by the time these trees are worth any money so in that regard do it's more productive for the thing you really care about which is hunting he's like i wouldn't even worry about it. he's like these trees that are four or five inches he's like I mean, yeah, it might be worth something to somebody decades from now, but it's not like, oh, you're losing tons of money by doing this, you know? He's like, you're never gonna see the financial gain from it anyway, so what the heck. So now what we're gonna be doing is putting a fuel pin in the first, and, but before we do that, I wanna do a little before and after, so we're gonna get this thing on the road here. I wanna show you guys how this thing accelerates and how the smoke is on it, because there's not much. So acceleration and go. show you the no smoke out the tailpipe when you pedal it down now. Okay, there's a little dusting. That was pretty much pedaled down. Um, not much, not much. However, the truck does have, I believe, 50 horse injectors in it. So the truck's got 50 horse injectors. It's got an upgraded turbo housing on it. It's got the piping kit. It's got, you know, a bunch of other little things, but now it doesn't have the governor spring in the fuel pin, which is why it doesn't really have the acceleration that it used to. Not that it had a crazy acceleration, but it doesn't really have the acceleration that it used to, and it doesn't have the smoke effect that it used to. And you definitely feel it in the pedal. I mean, it's not, as spunky as it once was. So today we've got a BD fuel pin and what we're gonna try to do, if it's as simple as it should be, I don't know, but uh, what we're gonna try to do is take the top off here and swap out the fuel pin with the BD fuel pin and see if it can't give it a little bit more acceleration and a little bit more power. Okay, you guys, so we got the new BD fuel pin put in here. Uh, it was kind of a pain in the butt to get that flathead style screw out there, but we did get it out and we didn't have to break it. So we got that out, we got the throttle position center put back in, the diaphragm and everything looked all good, everything's back in. With the ramped up and cut out part of the fuel pin facing towards the grill of the truck, I do have a kill board here just in case I have to try to kill the truck. Just in, I don't know if this would make the truck run away or not. I. I, I honestly don't, I'm not the most knowledgeable person when it comes to VE pumps, but a fuel pin was such a simple thing. I thought, well, I'll give it a shot. A decent garage has a really good video on all kinds of first gen stuff. If you guys are first gen fanatics, go check that stuff out if you're needing help on stuff. Anyways, let's get to starting this thing up. And uh, like I said, I got the board ready just in case because I'm out here solo. And if I got to kill it, I just slap it up and we're good. 
Uh, but yeah, so uh, let's start it up and see how it goes. I'm actually gonna message Decent Garage real quick and ask him a question. Oh man, should I be worried about my first gen running away by only upgrading the fuel pin? Question mark. He said no. We're all good. Fired up. Figured better safe than sorry. Let's get the air filter put back on and then we'll start to rev it up. Let's do another start up and rev with the tailpipe view. The first gen guy himself. You said I'd be okay. <laughs> so we're gonna get on the road here. And you guys remember seeing the tailpipe view from before. I'm not really seeing a big difference. smokes a little bit but not much more than it did before and also keep in mind I did not upgrade the governor spring just now when I did the fuel pin upgrade I did only the fuel pin I'm sure if we did the governor spring it would make a big difference but after seeing what happened last time I tried to replace the governor spring on one of these trucks I don't really want to mess with it so what I'm gonna do is probably see if I can get a hold of a shop that knows their crap and before anybody goes Oh, you should do it all yourself. If I had a first end run away on me before, almost, it almost completely ran away on me. Do you want me working on a truck that you might be taking home? Yeah, I didn't think so. If I'm not comfortable with something, I'm not gonna make myself do it just to try to prove somebody something, when in reality, my reputation is a little bit more important than what you think about me in the comments. Let's do a zero to 60 and see how long it takes this go around. It might take just as long, but We'll see. I don't even know if we have enough road over here to get this thing from zero to 60. I mean, like, if it's gonna take its time, that is. Seconds here to 60. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's awesome. I set this thing on the dash to record like it was our Cadillac or something. This camera's like freaking going crazy, falls off. As you can see, this is a speed demon of a truck right here. It's a, it's as fast as they come. I'm just gonna be one of those guys that's like, well, I don't need speed, I like reliability. You know what I'm saying? It's all about reliability, not speed. So I like my trucks slow but another thing is too i don't know if this makes a difference in how much fuel it's getting but the first gens have a little plastic sleeve factory that's right there that the fuel pin goes goes down through if you guys have had a first gen you mess with the fuel pin you know what i'm talking about there's like a little plastic sleeve that the fuel pin goes down through and i left that on i don't know if you're supposed to or not when I watched Decent Garage's video about the fuel pin thing, he said that some of them you take it off, some of them you leave the plastic sleeve there when you put it back in. I wasn't sure because he wasn't working with a DB or a BD fuel pin, so I didn't know whether I was supposed to take it off or leave it on. It's on right now, so I don't know if that'll make a big difference or not, but if it does make a difference, I'd like to know so I can take it off if it is interfering with the fueling of the truck. I don't know what my takeaway is, honestly. I don't really know what I was expecting to change with just the fuel pin, but I didn't notice really much of anything. At least, uh, at least not through the throttle pedal with that 
pin alone, unless that plastic sleeve's not supposed to be on, then that could make a difference. Or if it doesn't really make a difference, unless you put the governor spring in as well, then maybe it makes a difference. It also didn't take a lot of my time, so I guess I'm not too disappointed. Well, that's gonna be it for the first gen today. But real quick, if you guys did not know, every $1 gets you an entry towards winning this truck plus five grand and the giveaway is ending and I believe two weeks exactly. So if you haven't done so yet, go to lmpgear.com, buy anything off the store and as soon as you check out, you're automatically entered to win. Two weeks left to win this truck plus five grand. And one more thing, I wanted to show you the progress with Rosine's sub box. We did caulk up everything. It was actually yesterday. Um, when you see this video, it won't seem like yesterday, but it was actually yesterday when I filmed it. It's all dried up, everything's good, and all the cracks are all sealed off. Now what we need to do is get the, I believe it's the routing tool, and round off all the corners on this thing. That way it is not, you know, sharp on the edges and sharp around the corners, and then creating a problem for the leather when the leather has to go on it so um, we're going to work on that here soon and then get that rounded up uh, we got some things we got to do we got to run some errands but uh, that's the next step so hopefully you enjoyed the video i tried to do something cool with the first gen it just didn't turn out as cool as i thought it was going to be uh, maybe i did something wrong though i don't know let me know if i did down in the comment section below was that plastic sleeve that goes around that stock fuel pin supposed to go back in with the upgraded one or not anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video i've been trying to make them a little bit longer and a little bit more enjoyable so if you guys have actually enjoyed them please leave a thumbs up let me know down in the comments subscribe if you enjoy them and i will catch you in the next video peace